Al-Quran a miracle of miracles. I have read to you a verse from the Holy Quran. As we proceed, I will explain the verse and what Allah Baridala says about this subject of miracles. But let me explain to you what a miracle is. What is a miracle? A mojiza. A miracle is an impossibility. Something beyond human endeavor, human effort. For example, one of us, while this meeting is carrying on, he falls unconscious and he expires. A doctor is called up and the doctor certifies that the person is dead. Another doctor is brought forward to give his opinion and he also certifies that the man is dead. Take the body away, prepare for burial. But there comes along a man of God, sees this dead person, dead body, and he says, he commands, Kum bi iznillah. Wake up, get up in the name of Allah. And the person gets up alive and well. We say it's a miracle because it was an impossibility certified by two doctors and yet the person has come back to life. Miracle. But suppose the man was dead for three days, put in a mortuary, in a morgue. And after three days, somebody comes along, the man is gone as hard as rock, and he shouts at the cops, Kum bi iznillah, arise in the name of Allah, and the man comes back from the dead, from the mortuary, from the morgue. We say that is a greater miracle, because it's a greater impossibility. But after the person is dead and buried, his bones have rotted in the grave, and somebody cries, Kumbi Iznillah, and the person gets out of the grave, alive, breathing well, we say that is still a greater miracle. So greater the impossibility, the greater the miracle. I hope this definition, you know, is simple enough for everybody to grasp. Now in that sense, the Quran is a miracle of eloquence. In the first instance, you see, nations before Islam were sent prophets. And mankind had a tendency to demand proof by some supernatural acts. Hazrat Musa salam, the holy prophet Moses, he was given a type of miracle which was akin to magic. He was among the magicians in, in Egypt. So he had to contend with these magicians and Allah gave him a miracle to confound these magicians. Firaun, thinking that Musa -Salam was another magician, he brought forth his own magicians to play the part. And the magicians, the Egyptian magicians, they had little, little magic sticks, or magic wands, and they threw them on the ground. And all these little sticks became little, little snakes, serpents. Allah Bari Ta'ala had already given Hazrat Musa salam an experience with his rod on the mount. Now he knew what he was to do. So he threw his rod and the rod turned into a serpent. And this serpent swallowed up all the little snakes of the Egyptians. And Hazrat Musa salam picked up the serpent and it turned back once more into a rod. And the Egyptian magicians, they realized that this is no magic. This is not hypnotism. This is not mesmerism. Because to hypnotize a person, you cast a spell. You make the person to see what is really not there. It's an illusion is created. The sticks, you can make it appear like snakes by casting a spell. But here, all the little sticks had vanished. To demesmerize, it would have been to make the snakes to appear as sticks. No, no, no. But these sticks had vanished into the serpent, and the serpent was a rod, and the rod was no thicker than what it was before. A greater miracle. And the Egyptian magicians, they confessed that this is no magic. This is something beyond. It was a miracle, a real miracle, not magic.
So Allah gives miracles according to the mentality, the needs of the people. People with magical minds, they were confounded with magic, superior magic, real magic. Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, when he appears on the scene, he comes among a people who were steeped in Greek medicine. They were performing wonders with, with medicine. So Allah gives him healing powers, healing those born blind. A person who goes blind by shock or by some damage, infection, is quite a different thing from one who is born blind. And Allah Baritala gave him those powers of healing those who are born blind and the lepers, and he gave life back to the dead, revived the dead, bismillah. Type of miracle to convince the people. Our Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he comes among the people who were boasting about their language. The language was the boast. Their eloquence, their poetry. They said, we are an eloquent people. We are the Arabs. And the rest of the world is ajam, dumb, compared to us. They boasted. They would ask, this is you, in your language, you ajami. How many words have you got for a horse in your language? Synonyms for a horse. Oh man, so maybe half a dozen. He said, you see, we can give you a hundred in our language. He says, how many words, synonyms you have for a sword? Oh, anybody will say half a dozen. He said, you see, in my language, I can give you a hundred. So you see, we are the eloquent people and you people are all dumb, ajam. So among such a people, when he comes along, the greatest miracle that he gave was the Quran. That the language of the Quran in the first instance was beating the people. And they realized, people with sense, that this is not poetry, this is not prose, this is something beyond our understanding, and people accepted the faith. But let me tell you what a non-Muslim, non-Muslims, they have to say about the Quran and its eloquence. A.J. Arbery, an Englishman who translated the Holy Quran into English. In his preface he says, whenever I hear the Quran chanted, is a foreigner. He had just learned Arabic. Arabic is not his mother tongue. And he says, whenever I hear the Quran chanted, meaning beautifully recited, it is as though I'm listening to music. Underneath the flowing melody, there is sounding all the time the insistent beat of a drum. It is like the beating of my heart. You can't help vibrating on the wavelength of the Quran. Then Reverend Bosworth Smith, a Christian missionary, he wrote a book on Muhammad and Mohammedanism. In this book he says about our Nabi Karim sallam, and the Holy Quran, he says, illiterate himself, an ummi, scarcely able to read or write, he was yet the author of a book, which we do not agree, that Muhammad وسلم, was the author of the book. He says, according to his belief, understanding that Muhammad وسلم, is the author of this book. So he is yet the author of a book, which is a poem, a code of laws, a book of common prayers, and a Bible all in one. And is reverenced to this day by a sixth of the whole human race as a miracle as a miracle of purity, of style, of wisdom and of truth. It is the one miracle claimed by Muhammad. His standing miracle, he called it. And a miracle indeed it is. Without doubt, it is a mochiza. An enemy testifies that this is a miracle indeed. And Allah draws our attention to this. In the verse I read to you from the Holy Quran, from Surah An-Kabut, chapter 29. I'm coming to it. Allah says, وَقَالُوا and they say, who are the Muslims, they say, لَوْ لَا أُنْذِلَ عَلَيْهِ آيَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ So why is not a sign, a miracle, a mujiza given to him by his Lord? This is a demand. They had heard about the miracles of Moses. They had heard about the miracles of Jesus. Now they want some similar performance from the Prophet of Islam. Like, for example, they were asking, he says, look, O Muhammad, they were trying to humor him. 
They were trying to make a mockery of him. So he said, look, O Muhammad, you say you are a prophet of God. Why don't you perform some miracles? Like the prophets of old. Like this Ohad, Mount Ohad, outside Mecca. Why don't you turn it into gold? Then we will know that you are a true man of God. Or put up a ladder up into heaven. Go up that ladder and bring a book down. Then we will believe that you are a true messenger of God. Or make rivers to gush out in the desert. Then we will know that you are somebody that we can hearken to. Waqalu and they say, Lawla unzil alayhi ayatun rabbih. In answer to that, Allah makes him to say, Qul, tell them, Innama al-ayatu inda Allah. So most certainly signs, miracles are in the hands of my Lord. In the hands of Allah. Innama ana nazirun mubin. I am only a warner, clear cut, straightforward, plain, simple, warner. Awalam yakfi. Is this not enough for you? Awalam yakfi him. Anna anzalna alaykal kitaba. Yutla alayhim. Say, is this not enough for them? That you rehearse to them, that you read to them a book which we have revealed to you, O Muhammad. This book we have revealed to you, O Muhammad. Is that not enough for them? To you, an ummi, a person who doesn't know how to read or write. You are rehearsing this book to them. Is that not enough in itself that it should be a miracle? You know this human child, this little child, Muhammad. He grew, grew up in front of your eyes. And up to the age of 40, he was like your own child. You know every move he made, every things that he did. You know everything about him. And this man who had had no schooling, now he's coming along and rehearsing the book to them. Is that not enough? It's a miracle. The book itself, Allah says, is a miracle. And a miracle indeed it is. A miracle, in the first instance, we Muslims, we believe that this book is Allah's kalam. Allah Ta'ala revealed it to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The enemies of Islam, they agree that this is the book that Muhammad left. Friends and foe alike, they say, this is the book that Muhammad left. But they say that this is not Allah's kalam. This is Muhammad's cleverness. Very clever man. So we say, look, he was an ummi, an unlearned person. He said, yes, but wasn't he a very clever man? Wasn't he a great speaker? Wasn't he a great thinker? Ah, we would have to agree that he was. He was exceptionally good in all these qualities. Then he said, look, why could he not have rehashed into a beautiful language what he heard from his environment and dished it off as revelation? It's his handiwork. Allah testifies against that. He says, Wa ma anil hawa. He says, He does not speak from his own desire. In illa wahnu yuha. It is no less than an inspiration sent down to him. Allamahu shadidul kuwa. He is taught by one mighty in power. We believe that this is Allah's kalam. Allah testifies and we testify. But the outsider, he says, No, this is Muhammad's handiwork. So I am telling you, my brothers and sisters, let us for a moment agree with the skeptic, with the cynic, with the critic. Let's agree with him and admit that this is Muhammad's book, that he is the author, though we know he is not. So he said, all right. So you say this is Muhammad's production. He says, yes. So now I want you to agree with me that this is a one-man job, one-man effort. If he did it, this is Muhammad's own handiwork. So, well, there's no hesitation in accepting that, that this is his handiwork. I said, right. In that case, I said, now I present to you this book in its material magnitude, in its size. This is one man job. You have here another job, which you claim to be Allah's Kalam, the Bible. This Bible consists of the Old Testament, which is actually the book of the Jews, and the New Testament, old and new, put together, the Christians have inherited it. 
old and new put together. In this encyclopedia called the Bible, there are 66 books inside. What we might call surahs, in the Quran we have 114 surahs, they have 66 books, big and small. But these 66 books are authored by 40 different persons. This is what they tell us. 40 different people, their writings lying around, manuscript form, whatever form, that they got them together into one book. 40 different people wrote, went together to produce this one book. This is a one-man production, if at all. Out of those 40 different authors of the Bible, the greatest writer, the most voluminous writer of all is a person called Saint Paul, the real founder of Christianity, Saint Paul. This Saint Paul wrote more than more than cent of the books of the New Testament. There are 27 books in the New Testament. Out of the 27, Paul wrote 14 more than 50 percent but those 14 books put together they don't consist more than this what i'm showing you now not more than this 14 put together the greatest writer the most learned writer that's 14 books this is one man job on the physical magnitude of it we say it's a miracle and this book the quran is not talking anything everything filling up is a filler no, no, no. It's a very, very concentrated stuff, guiding mankind into all aspects of life, solving all his problems for eternity till Yom al -Qiyam. So, Allah says, is this not enough for you that this book we have given to this man and Ummi? Then the contents of the book you see, in this book, the Quran, some of these things I'm demonstrating to you, the subject is so vast, Wallah, it, take, it will take a number of talks to deal with the whole subject. And I do not want to hold you people up here till midnight or till early morning. I can. Just on this subject alone, I can keep you all here till one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. But I do not think it's fair or just to you or to me to do such a thing. So I will have to curtail a lot of things because I, as a layman, I can give you a dozen different miracles in the Quran. The learned man, perhaps he can give you a hundred miraculous nature of the Quran. I myself, as a layman, I can give you a dozen, which we will not be able to touch tonight, but I give you a few. Number one, the concept of Allah Baritala. You see, we know Allah by his attributes. And Allah gives us his attributes in his book. We do not have to create these attributes. We have not to concoct them as to what Allah is. So he tells us what he is. He is Ar-Rahman. He is Ar-Rahim. He is Al-Malik. He is Al-Quddus. He is Al-Salam. He is Al-Mu'min. He is Al-Muhaymin. He is Al-Aziz. He is Al-Jabbar. He is Al-Mutakabbir. And on and on and on. He gives us, Allah gives us in his book, 99 beautiful attributes. Like a necklace of pearls, 99 attributes with a crowning glory, Allah, a big pendant, Allah, proper noun, Allah, 99 attributes and one proper name, Allah, makes it a hundred. And I'm asking learned people, doctors, lawyers, philosophers, when I meet them, I say, look, tell me now. I would like to know from you, how many attributes can you imagine that you can attribute to God? How many? Come, try, try. This is well, he's the father in heaven, I say yes. He's, God is love, I say yes. Come on, tell us, whatever. Come on, he's just, I say yes. He's holy, I say yes. He's merciful, I say yes. Come on, come on, come on. You know the cleverest of us, the cleverest of mankind, the most learned of us, he can't go beyond a dozen. He can't imagine with all his learning more than a dozen attributes from his knowledge. He can't. 
I said, you see, this Ummi, if he did this work, he gives you 99. He said, well, you see, Muhammad was a genius. And a genius can do 10 times better than us. He admits, he's a genius. Still, it is not Allah's kalam. A genius can do 10 times better than what I can. I concede that I take off my hat to Muhammad. He is great, but he is no prophet. He is not a man sent by God. I said, all right, all right, but now look. In the names that you mentioned, in the first six, the first one was the Father in heaven. But let's say, in a number of tries, in the first half a dozen, you can't help using the word Father. They say, Abbana, O our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, O our Father, the loving Father in heaven. The first half a dozen, you must come out with the word Father. Said, so yes, anybody, if you try, the Father is there, is dangling before everybody, because the Christians have made it famous. The Jews were calling him the Father in heaven. And the Christians call him the Father in heaven. The commonest, this word, Father. I said, you know what? In the list of 99, this word Father is not there. That is a miracle. See, the miracle is that the thing that is being dangled before him for 23 years, people are talking about the Father in heaven, the Father in heaven, easiest to take. He doesn't take it. He doesn't catch it either consciously or unconsciously. We know it's not his word. It's Allah bari ta'ala. He's making him not to use the word Abb. In Arabic, it's easier than Rabb. He's Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. He's the Lord, cherisher, sustainer of the worlds. He's Rabb, Rabb, Rabb. And Rabb is harder than Abb in Hebrew as well as in Arabic.